What's going on, everybody? We got kind of a Techtober. That's something that goes on in the tech world, I know, when we get to like September, October. And we're kind of having one in the golf world right now. So we're going to start doing some Tech Tuesdays. We've got so much stuff to go over. So we're going to do that today. We're going to start with Live View Golf. They got a new camera. Let's talk about it. going on everybody Scott Oden coming at you we're here we're in the studio getting ready for our off season I think for me my season's pretty much officially done I just got back from playing at French Lick got to play the die course which uh you know maybe uh fair not fair definitely interesting definitely uh challenging I would have played it from longer the caddies kind of talked us into going up to a shorter tee I would have played longer but Definitely not that 8,200 yards that it can play at, which is ridiculous. So uh, I don't know how anybody would play it from back there. But we're now into working on our games. It's the off season. So if you're interested in working on your game, we do have our first boot camp that is going to be starting up in November. I will link all that down below. You get to coach me for a month, okay? So you're gonna be able to get your swing looked at. I'll take a look at it, give you some drills, things that are gonna get you on track and get you working throughout the rest of the off season. So make sure you check that out down in the description below. Also we're gonna have, starting next week, our live show, Scott Ogan Golf Live. We are gonna be doing on Monday nights, 7 p.m. Central, gonna be live here on YouTube. Obviously you could watch it later as well but gonna be having some things that we talk about from a golf swing standpoint. I'm excited about this, uh, kind of get out there, hopefully get to a point where you can ask questions, things like that, and we're able to kind of talk through some things. But in the meantime, if you're looking for things to be discussed on the show, we'll be going over swings, stuff like that. But if you wanna go and have anything discussed, leave that comment down below or hit us up on all our socials. I'll link all that stuff down below as well and send your ideas in. All right, so we are into Techtober and we're gonna be talking about this LV Pro Live View Pro 2 camera. And you might be saying, hey Scott, what is different than the Live View Pro, okay? Or if you had it old enough, this is the Live View Plus. They changed the name somewhere along the line. But this is a camera I have been huge on in the past. I love this device. Um, one of the biggest pet peeves I have as a coach is people that don't practice with feedback. Now. The Mevo Plus or your launch monitor, that is a form of feedback, especially if it's telling you club data and stuff like that. That is a version of feedback, which is good to have. But what I like is that you wanna be able to combine that with kind of like what you feel like you're doing and what you see that you're doing. So I think a camera has been a great way to do this. Now, cameras have been around for a while. The way we had to do this back in the day, you had to get one of those cameras. I had like the one with the mini little tape you went out with it, you had to record it. It didn't have the ability to play back at the time. Then they, those came along, I know, but you know, it was a tiny screen. And I had to go take it home, you had to watch it. Then you had to say, all right, hey, I did it or I didn't do it. And then you had to go back, you know? And so there was times where I would go back multiple times in a day, or I'd have to go back the next day or the next week, whenever it was. But then cameras have come a long way with our phones now have cameras on them. And then with a tool like Live View, we actually have the ability to kind of put a camera in place where it can become a mirror, which is something we always wanted as well. Like we used to draw lines on a TV screen. If you had power, you could get a TV out there. It's like, all right, I'm just gonna put lines on this TV screen and try to match those up. But then like recording would get, it, get off and all that. And then you had to set it up all the time. But now with these cameras, you can actually record and get your feedback that way. Plus you can compare it, save it, send it, all of that stuff. Well, that was awesome. One of my favorite things to do. I use this device all the time, but one of the biggest issues was always, especially when we're indoors, and this is true with all cameras, is light. It really becomes a challenge to use a camera indoors because we don't have enough light. When you're outside, you got more daylight, but that really starts affecting how things look. So. This is where the LV Pro 2 comes along. So a couple of things that we'll talk about with it. First, you can see the differences in the designs, much smaller, both come with the case. This is one that looks kind of like just like a little sleeve that you use. This one actually has a case that you zip. Um, the other thing that I noticed right off the bat is USB-C charger, whereas this uses a micro USB, so this charges faster. The battery on this, I actually have been using this for a few days, have yet to charge it. 
and I still haven't seen the battery indicator go below being fully charged. So it seems to be really, really good. This device had good battery, but it is now starting to kind of wane. It's five years old. Um, what's nice is with this LV Pro 2, you actually have a removable battery so you could switch the batteries out. Now there's also a micro SD card slot, which they say is just for local storage, which they do give you when you buy the device. So that's really cool as well. And by the way, I did buy this because I saw the upgrades. and I was like, yes, I need to see that. So I did buy this, but a couple of things on the design. One thing that I kind of miss is one, you do have your mounting for a tripod, just like you do on the original Pro, but you no longer have the ability to put it on an alignment rod. So I always like that, something that you kept with the golf bag. So you need to have something to mount it with. Now, what I do is I use it with my iRange tripod and I have just a little metallic sticker on the back, okay? It hasn't seemed to affect it at all. I just stuck this on there and then I just stick it onto the tripod. So that's what I do because the iRange fits in my bag as well, all right? Other than that, you got this little LED screen kind of tells you things are going on. Pretty cool, but again, I don't know how much necessary it is other than just a little bit easier to read and work with. But the biggest thing you're gonna see with this device is in the performance of it, all right? so. I said before, the biggest issue you have is light, especially when you're working inside. So what does light do? Well, light makes it where you're gonna have more motion blur, it's gonna make the image darker, you're gonna start missing frames, things like that. So this camera here, you had a 480p picture and it was about, you know, they tried to get to like 30 frames, but I never really got that when I did it, but uh, especially in low light, but this new version, 720p, okay, so higher quality, at 120 frames, okay? Now, the way they're able to do that is a couple of things. One, this camera has an aperture, we call it an f-stop, of f2.0, all right? You might see this if you use the portrait mode or the pro settings on your phone. The camera I'm using, for example, has an f-stop. The lowest it can go is f2.8, so, it goes pretty low at f2.0. The, the lower the number, that means the wider the lens can get and the more light that can come in. So that's huge. Now, the other thing this camera has is what we call an ISO, which in, again, camera world is just essentially artificial light. Now your phone automatically does it pretty much, but this camera will automatically do it as well. So if you're in a lower lighting situation, it's going to start boosting that ISO. That is huge when you're trying to work with video. So when we start looking at the quality of the image that is pumped out, here's a side-by-side -side of some swings. It's just way better. You get way more pictures. You still have a little bit of motion blur, but that's true when you're working with something that's going this fast. We would need to go much, much higher in that frame rate, even probably above 240 to kind of get rid of that motion blur, especially in low light. But you get a really good look at what's going on in the swing. The rest of the features as far as, all right, hey, how does it work with the iPad? Still has the same software as far as Live View Studio, which has a ball flight trigger. They also have an AI trigger, which to be honest, I haven't used because I just like the ball flight trigger. It works well. You can adjust the sensitivity of it all of that stuff. So I just use that. I can use it. You can make it really, really sensitive for putting or short game, which I've done. It works really, really well. So I do that. You do also have, if you want to get the studio version, you could upgrade. There's a trial for it. You can actually get it to where you can pair up with another device, like another iPad. So you could technically have a dual camera setup. I, you know, if you want to do that, that's fine. I personally, it's kind of hard. Like I love how much this camera looks and what I'm looking at. And I typically don't look at two angles anyway. I kind of pick one thing and work on that. So I've done it. It works. Do I think I'll use it? Probably not. So that's not exactly what I would go for. But from right there, just having a camera that works better. Now it does do a download. Once you, you know, pretty much like the old camera did, you'll hit a shot. You get a little download bar, it's very quick, pops it up, boom, we're ready to roll. That's something that it does. You can share those videos, you can cut them up, you can draw lines, you can do all that stuff. So it's a really cool device, one that I think is 
necessary if you're trying to get better. You need to have some way to look at your swing, combine feels and reels. Now, people will ask, why don't you just use the FlightScope Mevo Plus? I don't personally use it because when I'm trying to do the live mode, it is too slow, all right? From connecting all the devices and stuff like that, I'm trying to get feedback, hey, am I hitting this position? Am I hitting this position? I want lines and everything and hit those. For me, it's a little too slow. Plus, now having the option to get slow-mo video, that is a better option, especially for me as a teacher, but it's just somebody that wants to look at my swing and be very sure about what's going on. This is an option. FS Golf, that is a great option if you wanna use that once in a while. Hey, I don't have the camera set up. I'm gonna just take a look really quick. However, I like to use my computer for putting up awesome golf for all the data. So this gives me that chance to use a different device and say, all right, hey, I'm gonna get my video while I still have the data up on the computer, which I really couldn't do unless I was using the Mevo Plus camera before. So it's an awesome device. The thing that we didn't talk about is it's going to be the price. So this device is going to be more expensive, all right? So the original Live View, this one, 350. This one's going above 600. However, with the code SHG EPIC, you do get 20% off, all right? So if you take that down, you're gonna be closer to 400, $430. So you're looking at like a $70, $80 upgrade from this camera to this one. To me, that is worth it, all right? If you're looking at the devices, much more worth it and this device really knocks it out of the park. So again, use that code. That's where you start saying, all right, hey, this is something I would be looking at and I wanna use. So the LV Pro 2, a great tool, something I think a lot of people need. If you don't wanna get a full-blown launch monitor to get some feedback or get your camera going with the swings and all that, this is a great device. Obviously, you can still use your phone. However, again, you miss out on that ability to just have the swings going. Instead, you gotta keep going and checking, things like that. That always was something that annoyed me with filming. So if you have questions about it, please leave a comment down below. As always, click that subscribe button. We're gonna have more with Techtober. We're gonna do it every Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we have the newest Blast Motion Sensor, which is a great tool for a very budget-friendly price. And I just got it, upgraded my previous Gen 1 sensor, so we're kind of testing it out. It has some more features that have actually been pretty cool so far. So make sure you don't miss out on that. And again, check out our boot camp and our live show coming up on Monday. Do not miss it. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.